When I first started playing Valorant, well, I sucked. I was really bad at Valorant. It was my first tack shooter, and at the very beginning, I was in silver. And there was things that if I would have known back then, I would have quickly climbed, but it took me a little while to get through it, and some of these misconceptions persist even in your games. So I'm going to break down these tips that you need to learn, that you need to know if you want to climb out of silver, out of gold, out of plat, and to the high ranks to play as quickly as possible. And the first thing I want to talk about is the tack shooter nature nature of Valorant, right? Because especially if you come from other shooters, you don't really have the fundamentals that a tack shooter needs in order to succeed and be accurate. There was two core things that I misunderstood back then. Number one is the idea of crouching. I was assuming that crouching and committing to sprays and controlling sprays was the most effective way to get good at Valorant, but because especially of the RNG aspect of sprays and the fact that first shot accuracy is so important and being mobile and hard to hit is so important. Crouching is the situational thing to do. It is not the thing that you should be doing every single gunfight. In fact, most of the time, you're supposed to be taking a duel, taking a couple steps, taking another duel. If another person jumps on you while you're taking that second duel, then you could commit to a spray and a crouch to help that spray. But it's a specific thing you do, not something you do each and every time. And that was something that I was doing wrong a lot. I was just committing to crouch sprays all the freaking time. And the other thing that's really important about attack shooter in compared to many other shooter games is that it's about challenging an angle deliberately challenging an angle being ready to fight an angle right whether there's a person there or not you are looking to actually not have to flick not have to react if you challenge an angle perfectly you either needed to do a micro flick or no flick at all it is not like games like apex and overwatch where you're trying to follow a target through the air keep your crosser on them and always have to adapt to every single random situation you're trying to deliberately isolate the amount of situations that you have to aim in and do a lot of the heavy lifting by challenging these angles whether they're there or not and clearing them appropriately now so that you know how to do this perfectly and really know how to take duels win gunfights and dominate you need to check out skillcap.com where no matter what your aim skill is right now we can level up your skill and make you a god tier aimer as quickly as possible and we offer a money back guarantee so if you don't climb you don't pay so what are you waiting for check it out right now in the links down below the next up is peaking an angle a concept that i didn't really get why it was important at the start but it's incredibly important and what i mean by this is how far you are away from an angle before you peak it so let's take bind showers right if you slow peak an angle really close to the corner really close to the wall enemies are going to be able to see you far before you see them you need to take a lot of steps back and you want to be as far as possible from the angle comparatively to your opponents because if there's a corner or an angle if you are further from that and you're peeking it slowly you will see the enemies hitbox and character before they see you and if you don't understand this concept you're gonna get into gunfights where you get shot before the enemy is even on your screen which means that there's no possible way you can win those fights so it's really important that you understand this concept you ingrain it into your play and it's something i wish i would have known a lot sooner next up is something that happens to pretty much every new valorant player and it's dying with your abilities out a lot you're constantly whipping out your abilities and you're dying whooping out your abilities and dying and you often will find players that will not use their abilities enough because they're afraid of getting pushed or getting killed why they're trying to set up their abilities and this is really why you need to clear forward space you need to gather information about forward space right so if you're gonna whip out like a dart you're not just walking up to the corner and whipping out that dart or whipping out that drone you're jiggle peeking the next open space so you know that if someone wants to cross that they're gonna need like three or four seconds enough time for you to whip out your ability use it and potentially get back to your gun and fight an enemy if they just decide to beeline push you right or there's going to be some form of notification so while yes maybe the immediate forward space is clear but they double satchel they dash or they use any other ability to get to you that will make noise that will give you information that you know i need to cancel my ability i need to get ready to fight so if you start to ingrain this with all your ability use you won't get caught out with 
your freaking pants down, your abilities out, and get rolled and smoked, you will have much more impactful abilities each and every time. And speaking of abilities, one of the things that I struggled with is getting value each and every time I use an ability. And this is something that you'll continue to have a problem with basically throughout all ranks unless you really lock in on this one key detail. And it's trying to use utility for a very specific purpose or goal instead of just using it for a general purpose or goal, right? It's not like I walk in with a Sova dart or a Molly and just say, I'm going to do some damage to somebody or I'm going to clear some corners. I'm going to gather some info. I'm gathering a specific piece of info. I'm clearing a specific corner. The idea is that I'm trying to get value out of it in a singular purpose because then you can for sure get value in that regard. And if you try to reach for too much, you're going to do a little bit of nothing with it, right? If you try to clear every corner, you might miss a ton of little corners that enemies are hiding in. But if you force clear one corner, you guarantee get value out of that one corner. If you force Molly one corner, you guarantee clear that corner so that enemies aren't there, right? And this is super, super important making sure to hone in and use your abilities for singular purposes and goals it's gonna make sure that you get guaranteed value out of them now five on the list and this one is one that i fell into the trap of a lot and it's trying to play gotcha quote unquote gotcha right and it's really fun to try to break the rules of valor right you're not playing precise you're not trying to you know rifle take angle duels properly you're running and gunning you're shotgunning you're judging and you know you kind of thrive a little bit off of making people mad maybe you're double dash up drafting in doing some cycle stuff whatever it is it's playing gotcha it's trying to ignore the rules of valorant not get better at valorant and really dive head first into some of this nonsense some of this more silly stuff in valorant now don't get me wrong some of this stuff can be really fun and it can be a cool part of valor but if your goal is to get better you need to lock in on doing the proper fundamentals getting better with your gunplay getting better with your angle taking and not trying to cheese your way to wins each and every time and i honestly feel like if i would have done a lot less of this and a lot more fundamental gunplay i would have got better a lot quicker instead of stagnating my skills the number six and this is one that was really difficult for me and it's that one of the hardest skills to learn in valorant and this is different from most other games especially fps games is that patience is the hardest skill to learn in valorant you always feel like you want to do more right you want to randomly bust out your knives dash updraft and go pop off you want to randomly run it down mid you want to randomly do this do that push this push that and you want more 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 but at the end of the day valorant is a game about patience nothing happens until everything happens it's really important for you to try to quell that inner adhd quell that inner desire to do things all the time because that is one of the skills that's hard it's it's a disciplined skill where one little mistake one force action could be the difference between you losing and winning and popping off and if you want the highest peaks this game has to offer the really highlight moments you need to try to really appreciate the moments where you have to be patient the moments where you're waiting the moments where the opponent has to make the first move the moments where you use time as a resource because at the end of the day getting better at valorant is never boring and winning is never boring now also one of the things that i wish i would have done a lot more is just warming up oftentimes i was very inconsistent and some some days I would pop off and some days I would play absolutely terrible and it comes down to consistency I would either not warm up I would be really tired I would just hop on the computer randomly and most importantly of all I never built that routine so that I would be playing at about the same amount of efficiency day after day and it made it really hard for me to improve and kind of optimize my play sessions but the last thing that I wish I would have known in silver is to stick with a set of characters I'm a natural curious guy that likes to flex right i want to play this character and that character in this role and that role and this actually hurts you a lot because you only get surface level right i got okay at silver i got okay at open i got okay at jet and it's cool to be okay at things right you get to always flex and fill and play the character that your comp needs but i was never enough to be the best version of that in the lobby right i could play a okay jet but the other jet that locked jet all the time would be better than me i could play an okay omen but the omen one trick on the other team was 
was better than me. And this is something that's super important. If you want to get the repetition, if you want to become really great with a character, if you want to get exposure to multiple types of situations, you need to try to isolate your agent pool. Make sure that you're not playing too many characters all at once. I would suggest three or less, to be honest with you. Maybe four, depending on the role you're playing. But really, try to minimize the characters you're playing. Try to get really, really good at them. And another thing that I want to tack on here is don't just chase meta. Just because a character is good at this patch doesn't mean a character will always be good. And if you're always chasing meta, you're never sticking with anything long enough to get good at it. All right, though, guys, before we wrap this up, let me tell you a little bit more about skill capped. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee, and that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that. Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really works. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium Valorant guides on the Internet. We had new courses every month with over 1,000 guides curated into 50 courses no one can compare. We also have a direct line of communication with subscribers in our Discord so that you can get connected immediately to some of the best players in the game who will respond to any and all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So that's going to be all for this one today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.